This is Talk Radio 680 WCBM. Time now for the Pat McDonough Show. Here's your host, Pat McDonough. Well, good evening. It's a beautiful, beautiful night in Baltimore. I am not Pat McDonough. I am Frank Marchant. And I am filling in tonight with my good buddy, William R. Bowie III. Pat is talking to a veterans group and can't be with us tonight, but we are so, so happy to be with you. Uh, you can join us on Facebook. We're, we're broadcasting live on Facebook, and we're, of course we're live here in the studio with a cast of tens. <laughs> so it's great. It's great to be there's so much there you know I was talking to Bill earlier about this. We usually have a guest and we've had some sensational guests on with us. But this week in the news there are so many things have been happening. There's a news blackout for uh, Elijah Cummings' wife, Maya Rockamore Cummings. The Sun Papers did a little bit about it a couple weeks ago, but they are refusing, really, to do any more about it. And there's just so much dirt. Um, equal justice under the law. It's, it's very evident to me uh, that if you are a Republican, you receive one kind of justice. And if you are a Democrat, you receive a completely different kind of justice. Uh, President Trump's uh, uh, speech, a little, not it was a speech, it was just a couple words he said uh, to Stepanopoulos about uh, he would listen to a foreign source if they had some information about a candidate, and then he would go to the FBI. Has caused just a... Yeah, on all, on all those stations, they've been, they've been it's just, making a big point of that, but I think it's the desperation behind understanding that 220 is uh, very close. The election... It's you, very close. You're right. 2020 is right Which around means. the corner. But I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell you this. It just shows how stupid, 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 stupid the media is acting. And they are acting really dumb. It, they would get upset. If he would order, if, if, if President Trump, who is doing an amazing job in my, um, in my humble opinion, he really is. I don't know how he could do any better. Uh, if he would order an extra scoop of ice cream. They would go crazy. That's what you have to do when you're desperate. You have to kind of you, – you're reaching for the twigs on a tree, not the branches, not the trunk, but the twigs. Well, I think that I think that's true. I think that's very true. And, oh, our, you know what? Who, you know who our special guest is going to be tonight? It's who going to be it? our caller. So let me give you the number. Uh, 410, if you're in Baltimore or the surrounding area, 410-922-6680. 410-922-6680. And if you're uh, watching us online or listening to us online or on Facebook and you're outside of our area, call us. It's toll free. 800-922-6680. That's 800-922-6680. So uh, let, me, let me ask you, and I'd like your, to hear from you at home, too. Uh, who do you think the next uh, Democrat candidate is going to be? Uh, that's 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 the sixty four thousand dollar question. Right now, I've heard some people say, and it's awfully early, uh, and I believe Pat believes Biden's going to choke, uh, and Biden will not be the candidate, uh, and it, it, he believes I think it's going to be Elizabeth Warren. Now, how do you feel about that, Council? I, I mean, I I don't think it's going to be Elizabeth Warren. I think Biden's going to be the pick. I think in the midst of uncertainty about. Uh, who the Democratic candidate is going to be? I think it's going to be Biden. I think that's the uh, that's the best horse they have to run, and I think they're going to run that horse. There is so much. There is so much dirt on Joe Biden. So 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 much dirt. Uh, the uh, Ukrainian deal where his son sat on the board yeah, of energy, I saw that. I saw and he made news. three million dollars in and a couple years, and he was working with a. A, a Russian oligarch and uh, mm-hmm. I, and I and, news, yeah. and they were going they were looking to prosecute him for illegal activities. Uh, at which point Biden, who was holding a billion dollars, who was in charge of that for the president, he was vice president at the time, said, "You better knock. Oh, you better fire the prosecutor. Fire the prosecutor, or you're not getting the billion dollars." I now, saw, isn't, that, bl- isn't that blatant? I mean, that's I mean, got it, to be it, illegal it, in 10 it, different well, it, ways. It's, it's certainly a conflict of interest. But I think even before you get there, I think when you look at the competence of the two individuals, assuming that Biden's going to be the Democratic candidate, uh, no matter what you say about Trump, he's a good businessman. He's done an excellent job running the United States of America, which is the biggest corporation. 
to run. So Biden really, other than being a U.S. senator, unless you can tell me something that I don't know, doesn't have a resume to compete. No. Not without no, even without true. even going to a scandal based type comparison. Um, you're looking at one individual who's who's run multiple corporations, who's been extremely successful, versus another individual who's really just been a politician. Yeah. Well, it's been said of it's been said of Biden, he's been the, on the wrong side of every issue for 40 years. I think even even before you get there, if Biden was going to be president, then he would have never been vice president. It would have been Biden would have been the president. Obama would have been the vice president. I think if you just backtrack, if Biden was if it was presidential quality, he would have already been president. Well, I think that's true. I think that's true. You know, Biden did not even want to do the invasion for uh, for bin Laden. Biden was the one guy in in Washington who said, "No, no, no, let's not let's not get Bin Laden. He's in uh, he's in where he is." But, is not but a again, I think the elephant in the room is that we've got a roaring economy right now. I think we that's do. that's what Americans care about. They care about do they have money in their pockets? Um, I think in terms of a legislation legislation background, uh, Trump has been able to get to the tax the tax reform in. Um, I think because of all of the, I, I guess, just the way Congress is situated at this particular point, it's probably not going to be a lot of legislative b- breakthroughs at this particular point. But right. tax reform has been done. Um, I think the whole issue of immigration has been put to the forefront of things, um, at least for a conversation. And I think his most important thing that he's done that people don't talk about is challenging China. China, it, Ch- China has been taking advantage of the U.S., for so long. Yes, you're right. In terms of the trade policy right. and him going in saying, hey, China, we're not taking this any anymore is something that no one has no one has done. You're right. No one yeah, has it's done. It's funny you would say that because we were just talking about this the other day. Uh, and uh, when Trump was in Japan, he asked uh, Abi, the uh, prime minister there, he said, uh, why is it that you take advantage of the United States the way you do with trade? And he said, quite frankly, Mr. President, because the presidents that preceded you allowed us to. Yeah. And in, in the new war, Frank, is not is not about bullets, in my opinion. It's not about any type of nuclear bombs. The new war is business and controlling business. China figured that out a long time ago, and I think so did Japan. And they've attacked the United States of America on the basis of business. I think that's very true. Right. I think that's very right. true. And that's not talking about all the other things that, that have a tendency to come through our borders, well, such, as fent- has, such as fentanyl. That's it, it, well, that, from what I hear, and I don't know for a fact, but seems to be primarily manufactured in China. Fentanyl came from China. Exactly, it was created in China. Exactly. Fentanyl is a manufactured drug started in China, and they brought it here. And honestly, uh, we had one hundred and fifty thousand people die from opiate overdoses last year. Right, right, and if I, I would like to know how many people died from overdoses of fentanyl, because if that's the case, it, you could certainly make a correlation to between what China did and what China has done and what China is doing and the deaths of 150,000 people. Right. And it's interesting. And now, is I, did I go out on a limb there? I, I, don't, I don't think you went out on a limb. And, okay. I, and I'll tell you something interesting point. From a historical standpoint, the person who saw the China threat first was Nixon. No. You don't think so? I totally disagree. Well, he engaged. He certainly engaged him. Nixon engaged. Nixon was the first president to actually open up China and explore China. Uh, Henry Kissinger and Nixon, uh, because I remember it like it was yesterday. It was the most exciting thing in the world to me at the time. But I think Nixon did so because he perceived that in terms of long term, it might not be Russia who was really a threat, but it might be China. Well, I, Nixon was a brilliant man. I right. Mean, in terms no of foreign relations, no matter what you say about maybe, him and the other stuff. The, maybe what you're saying in that. in that. Yeah, I think he perceived maybe. China in terms of a long-term threat and therefore engaged in China. Better to have them as friends than enemies. Well. Uh, because the Russians and China were pretty close, although there were always skirmishes on their border. Yeah. It's, all, it's always been, uh, it's just been a historical issue between yeah. Russia and China. But right. China, China has attacked the United States, not with bullets, not with nuclear weapons. But with business. And drugs. And drugs, you know. And, and students who come here and steal things well, and go back to China. The, well, that point well taken. Yeah. But now, business. It all, it all have, comes up to business espionage. Yeah. 
Uh, but we're back to the, the realm of business and understanding, and this is where it, it ultimately comes to play with the average American yeah. jobs and how trade affects U.S. jobs. Well, that's true. How that's trade true. affects U.S. jobs. Uh, 410-922-6680, if you're local, 410-922-6680, 800-922-6680. We have Bob in Parkville on the line. Bob, you, wh- what's on your mind tonight? Yes, good evening. Good I, evening. I wanted to talk about the situation regarding the Roman Catholic Church and this pedophilia business. First of all, the United States is not a country of... Uh, f- uh, of, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, theology. Oh. This is a it's completely different. Because the First Amendment that guarantees, right. guarantees you freedom of I'm religion, listening. whatever your religion may be. Right, Bob, I'm listening. But it also guarantees you freedom from religion. Okay? Well, that's that's true. That's, that's true. The United but what... States will never, a government will never establish a, ch- uh, uh, a church for the United States like Britain did over there. Right. Bob, we got, we're up against a hard break here. So what is your point here? Uh, we've got. Uh, could you hold me over? Uh, could, yeah, I, hold, I can hold you over, but I'd like to get to your point. My uh, point is this. You had the bishops here in Baltimore okay. last week, and they accomplished nothing. Okay. He's the ecclesiastical law, yeah. and our, per, our, our laws of the United States are completely different. Okay. Now, are you Catholic, Bob? I was, and I gave it up about five years ago. Okay. Now, why? Why did you? Why did you? Cardinal up here in Massachusetts. Sure. Four hundred million dollars they paid out so far because of this bum, and he kept running the. These pedophile priests from one side of the state to the other covered up. Isn't that horrible? It's absolutely horrible. I totally agree with you. To the Vatican, protect him over there. I used to like John Paul. I thought he was a great man. That changed my mind right there. Well, Bob, I can't disagree with you. I think that's absolutely deplorable. Absolutely deplorable to to protect. Don't worry about these damn priests that are pedophiles. Yeah, I agree. Not the Roman Catholic Church or any other church. That's right. Not that little kid. It's a victim. You are so that, right. I agree. That, I can't that, disagree. That's NAP. Those, those kids are growing up now, most of them. Uh-huh. They have to live with what happened to them. That's right. And that's they cover right. up for the, the thing to do for these dumb bastards. Uh, I'm, pardon my language. Okay. Because I'm so pissed off. <laughs> I, 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 I feel to do you. Is to have them just like anybody else. That they're not above the law. If you have it's an true. accusation against one of these bums, take it to the law. Nine one one. The authorities handle it just like they would do you or me. Bob, I think you said that better than anybody else I know could say I'm that. Not above the law, according to this. I, I think you're right. I don't think we even have to hold you over. I think you said that better than anybody else I've ever heard say it. Well, it's a fact. It's a fact of life. You want a two uh, two uh, government system of law? Yeah. Well, look at the ordinary person and look at the Roman Catholic Church. Now, if you could, now let me ask you this hypothetical question here now. And and be and be nice. And I know you are nice. You're a nice man. You're just very upset, and I can understand why. But if if the Pope sat down with you, and he was across the table, Bob, what would you? And you would say it nicely. What would you say to him? I would tell him one thing. Yes, you know, sir. Your horses start doing something about it. They were supposed to meet here last November, or December, and he told them to meet them over in Rome in the council over there in February. February. Mm-hmm. He's in. He's in the one that's up to his neck. Believe me. Oh my. Oh, my. Well, Bob, I, I hope they can sort that one out. If That's you a... don't think the orders in the Roman Catholic Church comes down to these bishops and cardinals and so forth, mm-hmm. they come from the very top. And who's the very top? Well, that's the you're Pope. right about that. You are so right. Bob, thank you so much for calling. Right one, of, one of my favorite saints up there. I love, I love Massachusetts. Thank you for calling. Me. We're going to be back. We're going to take a short break. Number here is 410-922-6680. We'd love to hear from you. Welcome back. We are so glad you're here at Super Citizen Radio. And you can join us every day at supercitizenusa.com. Make sure you see the Super Citizen TV show tomorrow on my TV at 10 a.m. on Sunday. You can't miss that. It's the only conservative television show in Baltimore, Maryland. It's the only one, folks. So if you don't see that, you don't see the conservative news. You don't see the news that's blacked out of the Sun Papers because they don't tell you the 
they, I like them down at the Sun Papers. They're nice folks. Yeah. And I talk to them, and I know some of the editors, and I was. But there are some stories they're very shy about printing. And one of them is this uh, Cummings story. They they did a little bit about it, but my goodness gracious, there's like six, there's five point two million dollars missing from a nonprofit that Maya Rockamore Cummings did not report. She has not filed a nonprofit record since 1995. Not one record. She has a 501. Uh, she has what's called the Center for Global Policy Solutions. Uh, and she's not filing any records. So nobody knows where the money went. And there's a gentleman by the name of Robert Wood Johnson. It's a Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. That is the Johnson & Johnson Company up in Delaware. And they gave Miss Rockamore Cummings a $5.2 million for her for-profit uh, I'm sorry, $5.6 million for her for-profit and $5.2 million for her non-profit. A lot close, of money. Close to $12 million that's unaccounted for. No records are shown. Nothing. And, but, but, and, and let's go back so we can try to hopefully understand this. Okay. The money was given to the for-profit and, non- and non-profit for what? To do whatever... You'd have to ask Maya Rockmore Cummings. I don't know. It's a nonprofit that's supposed to help people. But she hasn't filed any records since 1995, so we don't and know. And this is Johnson & Johnson, like the big company, like yes, the big yes, corporation? Yes, yes, yes. But the, the prov- And the National League and Policy Center, which is a government watchdog group, has contacted and filed a complaint with the IRS. So they are looking into it, but on, on, on a basis this is a was, major story. That it was a conflict of interest because it's her husband... It's a total conflict of interest because uh, th- it's not just Johnson & Johnson that gave her money. It's Google, J.P. Morgan, Prudential, uh, and every one of those folks, every one of those companies has business interests before the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, and guess who the chairman <laughs> of... The The House Committee Committee on Oversight and Government Reform is Elijah Cummings, Maya's husband. Wow. So they're giving money to Maya, and then they're running to her husband saying, hey, can you help us out a little bit? Come on. I mean, how blatant can that be? Why isn't this a story? Why aren't people reporting it? Now, it's been alleged, but the facts of the matter is she hasn't filed any records since 1995. And if you have a nonprofit, you have to file every year. Hey, oh, okay, okay, okay. And you know that as well as I yeah. do because we sat, we've sat. we been on boards of nonprofits Yeah, yeah, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. There, but you did a story on this. I did do a story on and this. And it ran on TV. Ran on TV. It's running now online. It's getting a gazillion hits online. Uh, it, this is this is really, really important. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's really bad because I don't want to say Baltimore City and Baltimore County run dirty politics. I'm not saying that. I didn't say that, right? But Maya Cummings is uh, the head of the Democrat Party in the state of Maryland. Wow. Did you know that? No. And when Elijah... I think she was supposed to run for some office. Was it governor? She ran for uh, governor. Governor, okay. And she couldn't get past uh, go. I mean, she stopped. She she couldn't get past go. So as a consolation prize, they made her the head of the Democrat Party in the state of Maryland. Okay. Uh, but when Elijah Cummings was recently in John Hopkins, Eliza Cummings has a heart problem, and he had a valve replaced. And he spent wow. a couple months in Johns Hopkins. And while he was on what he might – and I'm not Elijah Cummings. I don't know what he thought. But while he was in that hospital bed, he said if he could not continue his seat as a congressman to give it to his wife, who was – his young wife, who was like 20 years his junior – um, now, if you follow this out, this woman already had $11 million in donations from one person that had been before her husband, and she's going to be taking his place, and he, and, and, and he gave it directly to her? Well, it, I mean, isn't that a, considered a well, bribe I, in some countries? I, I think this goes back to what you were state, talking to me about before the show started, which is that when many people go to Capitol Hill, they are people of modest means, but by the true. time they have held office for some time and they leave, they are people of great means. Well, it's true. The um, average the average congressman, when he comes to Washington, he's not worth 
the average congressman, unless you go as a multimillionaire, most of them come not poverty stricken, but not very wealthy. When they leave, if they've stayed there for any time at all, they're worth approximately $7 million each. Wow. $7 million. And part of the problem is this. And here's a problem every single person that hears my voice tonight should be angry about. They really should be angry about. If you work on Wall Street and you hear something about a stock and you buy that stock predicated on the information someone told you, that, and counselor, correct me if I'm wrong, right. is insider trading. It, 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 is, it is insider trading and... and Somehow or another, the, and you can go to jail if you're you on Wall Street. I, I think that's why Martha Stewart yes, went to jail. Ask Martha so Stewart if, if you don't believe it. Right, right. She Even though it, was, it was kind of hard to believe she went to jail. Martha Stewart went to jail. Insider but, yeah. trading, Martha Stewart. Now, let me tell you this, and I didn't mean to interrupt, but no. I'm just so hot about this right now. Nancy Pelosi bought five thousand shares of a Visa credit card company while they were building a bill in Washington for the purpose of helping credit card companies make money, right? So she buys 5,000 shares. In two weeks, her 5,000 shares that she bought in, in, now this is alleged, but it's not really because it's all, we have all the facts. Right. Uh, uh, she bought for $40 a share, became worth 60 some dollars a share in a couple of weeks after the bill was written. Mm-hmm. This was complete, total, insider trading done in Washington by a congressperson in order to make money, and it's completely legal. It is, until they have some type of legislation that would would forbid members of Congress, both Senate and House, from being able to be, essentially, being able to be permitted to do uh, insider trading. There's a bill right now in the House. It'll never pass. Yeah, well, (laughs) it's so far down in the docket. If you ask congressmen about this bill about stopping insider trading, they won't even know what you're talking about. Because they all, not all of them, too many of them do it. Well, it, it's, it's a, as we say in the law, it's a loophole. Something that's there and it's something that at some point uh, legislation should be passed to correct it so they will be held to the same standards that other Americans are held to. Uh, but I mm-hmm. think that's the problem, even though we're living in this capitalistic society, uh, it would appear that some people, especially those of the political hierarchy, are able to do things that the average American cannot do and would, in the case of Martha Stewart, even go to jail for. You're right. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's certainly a problem. But, I mean, at least, I mean, in the present sense that we have everything, the economy is at least at a, thanks, thank goodness to President Trump, a good state. The economy is um, rolling. And I think that's one of the things that, I'll be honest with you, what the biased media has not talked about, that the economy has roared back from um, the housing crisis of uh, 2008. Um, and, and, you know, I thought I had a strange thought the other day that, you know, 9-11 was a hit, and it was a hit to the economy, and then comes the, the, the housing crisis in 08. And we really didn't get our get our act together on the Obama administration. And here comes President Trump. And whether or not you're for or against them, one thing that you cannot take away from them is the fact that the uh, economy got back on track. Um, unemployment is at an all-time low for all groups. Um, and then right. we're moving forward. Housing prices are rising. Right. And uh, the train is roaring again. It truly is. It's um, the lowest and, and this is why, I'm going to tell you something, this is why President Trump, it's not going to be impeached. You're not going to impeach a president uh, uh, well, and the economy's so, ruined. It ain't happening. No, 69% of the public do not want to, uh, Trump to be impeached. And then, and There's then, five people in Congress pushing Nancy and Pelosi. Then, and then as the scenario side. goes on, the, the, the investigation, blah, 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 Russian collusion, they come out with the report. They come out with his attorney that uh, turns uh, to, to be a government witness who doesn't know anything about it. And to me, that was the first sign as a, as a legal person, as an attorney. I said, hey, if his closest person doesn't have any evidence against him, then it, then there's nothing there. And lo and behold, he testified, the lawyer, uh, doesn't know anything about any collusion. Uh, the Mueller report comes out, eh, no collusion, basically. That's pretty much what the report you know says. What? You just led me right. You know what I mean? You led me. And we've got people on the phone lines. I'm sorry. You're, I'm going to get to you. I promise. If you're there, you're going to be on the air. So uh, it's just let me let me give the number again one more time. 410-922-6680. 410-922-6680. 
zero. We have some lines open. Give us a call. Out of state, 800-922-6680, 800-922-6680. And we're waiting to talk to you about this. What you said is so I mean, I think, I think Equal justice under the law. Do you know where it says that at? You know where it says it that says at? It says right on the front of the Supreme Court. Oh, that's why I love letter, you. That's letter. why I love you. <laughs> a big you, you, you. You know what America's about. I that's do. exactly to, what it says. Let me tell you this, too. I used to work on Capitol Hill, and I would I always admire that when I would walk back down uh, to the foot of Capitol Hill, when I walk by the Supreme Court, equal justice under law. And if you're a lawyer, it means a lot to you. Yes. It means it strikes a If you're not a, a court, lawyer, it should mean a lot to you. It should, make, it should, it should it mean should a lot mean to you if something. you're American. And I tell you, this is what's yeah. chilling. Yeah. This is what absolutely chills me to the bone. Peter Strzok, Peter Strzok, the FBI, and everybody knows who that is. If you don't know who it is, look it up. Peter Strzok, when he interviewed... Uma Abedin, right, and Cheryl Mills, who was Hillary Clinton's um, head of her head of her campaign, head of her he chief uh, chief officer, uh, Cheryl Mills. The FBI called them in to interview them. Cheryl Mills asked for immunity, uh, and she got it, which was insane. She shouldn't have. She should not have been given immunity. Uma Abedin did not, and she was asked directly, "Did you know that Hillary Clinton's email and server had been hacked?" That was a question from Peter Strzok. Uma Abedin said, oh, no, I didn't. I didn't know they were hacked. I didn't know they were hacked. Total lie. She knew they were hacked in 2011. There was an email, an email that showed that she knew that. There was a whole chain but, of emails but, but, but that showed I, but that. I, but I really think, if, and I hate to describe everything as a court, but I think the court made its decision on that, which was the election of 2016, which is that Trump won. They didn't go for that. I don't think that I don't really think they had any creed. Are you sure? And nobody believed the Clintons, okay. and the, and the Clintons essentially lost the election. No, but it has nothing to do with. I, I know what you're saying is correct, but it has nothing to do with that. The point is, she lied to the FBI. She was forgiven not by the courts. She was forgiven by Comey, who said, "We have to forgive failing memories. We have to forgive failing." But when it came to Michael Flynn. He had a failing memory when he couldn't remember everything about the uh, the Russian ambassador, the conversation he had with him. And and uh, Papadopoulos had failing memory. Papadopoulos went to jail. Mike Flynn's going to jail. But these two characters who are point, Democrats yeah. aren't going to jail for doing the exact same thing. The point is well taken. There was, there was definitely no action Equal taken. Equal justice under the law. Ain't, it's ain't chilling. Well taken. We, uh, Frank Kelly, former state senator Frank Kelly, resigned yesterday. From the University of Maryland Medical System Board of Directors, just days after fellow board members had asked him to return. So he resigned temporarily, and they asked him to come back. Amid, and it's, this is amid the continued fallout over self-dealing scandal that have rocked the hospital network. Now, this is all part of the Catherine Pugh, Healthy Holly, mayoral deal, nonsense deal, yeah. that was going on. Now, Francis Kelly was a senator who helped write the laws that govern how hospitals receive money. So he knew the ins and outs of doing this better than anyone probably in the state. And he used that position to garner, allegedly, used that position to garner millions and millions of dollars. I think he was getting about $3.5 million a year for his for his insurance companies, he had medical insurance companies, and he was on the board. Now, do the math. He was making millions of dollars a year. He was on the board for nearly 35 years under six wow. governors. Uh, my goodness, goodness, goodness gracious, 79 years old. He and all and his sons are all resigning as well. They should all resign. Something is rotten in Denmark here. Uh, truly rotten. I think everybody on that board should resign. I really do. I think they should all resign and start another board. Uh, I, it, it, That's it, a good point. But, I mean, I still think it leaves, again, the $64,000 question is leadership for Baltimore City and what's Baltimore City ultimately going to do in terms Baltimore of getting everything City, straight. Baltimore City wants – now they're talking about Baltimore City merging with Baltimore County. I mean, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. It would be a complete disaster. Well, it would be like. Did you know? Did you know Baltimore City it, it is the only. It would be like the Titanic Baltimore runs City, into Lusitania. Baltimore City is the only city in the United States of America that's not 
really within a county's government that is a separate government. Every, every, like Chicago is in Cook County. Every city is in somebody else's county. And, but you know, it's a part except of except for county, Baltimore, except for Baltimore. It's the only independent city like that that has it's really that, that's completely really? separate. So you think it's not such a bad idea? It, the rest of the country is like that in terms of that the city is is a part of the the the, the county, the government. Because think about it, Baltimore City is not managing itself right now. Baltimore City has an extremely high crime rate. Ever since the um, riots, uh, we, we've been looking at roughly about three hundred murders. Right. Uh, you can't even go downtown to Harbor Place, and you know I hate sitting. I get beat up. Well, you, you, you know shouldn't I mean? go down. I I'll say it. Don't go downtown yeah, because yeah. you it's a it's a dangerous well, place to it's go. It's true, but I mean, I, that, that can't ultimately be the answer. It's going to have to be something that's that's going to be worked out and cleaned up. Did you see? Did you see? Uh, we did a report. Uh, where this is Super Citizen Radio, and every Sunday morning at ten o'clock on. Uh, on my my TV in Baltimore, if you're in Baltimore. If you're not, you can go to supercitizenusa.com and watch our shows there after they televise on my TV. Well, I did a thing on the squeegee kids yeah. in Baltimore. What a horrible problem. It what is. What a horrible problem. It is. If you don't pay them, they br- they'll break your windshield. Not all of them. Some of them. Some of them. Some of them you have issues with it. One you know. one kid threw something in a car and hit some woman in the face and it burst her lip but, open. But but I, you would hate for Baltimore City to be at a point where people are comfortable coming downtown. It's there's already there. I understand, but it seems like then we should be working towards some solutions to alleviate that. Okay, stop the squeegee kids from harassing people. I think it's bigger than the squeegee kids. Okay, and stop squeegee people kids are from, a, a stop sem- people from murdering people. Sem- okay, <laughs> how's that? Well, let, let, let's go back and and why is that happening? From a bigger from a from a bigger. Uh, are you say, Are you going to say because they need jobs? I, I don't know what the solution is. It's, I don't. It's, know. it's simply I, a question. Um, I, I think I think the the issue is that Baltimore City, unlike many other cities on the eastern seaboard, is not progressing, like New York. Um, I'm sure Philadelphia's got a lot of problems. So maybe I shouldn't mention Philadelphia, but uh, DC is progressing. Well, um, DC has progressed. I think ba- true. Boston's doing relatively well. See, I look at the East Coast as being really one big city with this thing called the train tracks, which dry- rise in between the cities, which is like one gigantic subway system. Baltimore is a weak link in that Baltimore, mega city. Baltimore is a place where more and more people are afraid to go. People who live in the suburbs aren't going. I know Jack Young, who I really like and I've liked for a number of years, and he's a wonderful guy, wants to build a Ferris wheel like they have in London, and he thinks that's going to cure the problem. It won't cure the problem. I mean, it'd be a nice Ferris wheel. But, my God, you'd have to run from your house downtown and jump on the Ferris wheel and hope you don't get shot or mugged before you get on the Ferris wheel. 